This question is really just testing whether or not you understand y equals mx plus b. Hopefully from all the answer choices, you would just immediately recognize that we're given that version of a linear equation. And we do need to know this. This is very important for the test. So we can then look at the different parts that are changing and just kind of compare them to the graph. The first thing I always look at is the y-intercept, which is represented by the b. And so we go on to the graph. We say, okay, where is that? Well, that's up here. Now I know it's not a real line. We could kind of connect these dots if we wanted to and just draw like a line of best fit. But regardless, we can see that the b is up here at something like 10. So that's a positive 10. And that would be a problem for choices a and c because those are negative 10, meaning we would have a y-intercept that's below the x-axis. So that's very clearly wrong. And just like that, we're down to a 50-50 chance. But before you start doing any sort of calculations, look at what's different between these choices. Now we have to think about the slope and we don't actually need to calculate the slope. The only difference is positive versus negative. That's something you can just get by looking at it. So take a look at this slope. What direction are these lines, is this line going in? Well, it's going down. That's a negative slope. So we need a negative slope. That's choice B, that's it. There are no calculations to do here. If for any reason you were really, really nervous, or maybe we had like a slightly harder version of this question where the equations weren't in like the normal y equals mx plus b format, we could always plug points into equations. And the reason that that works is we clearly have equations down here in the choices. And even though this is a scatter plot, um, we still have basically points um, in the graph. Right, so I would still connect the dots and kind of find a, a line of best fit, and then I would look for some points and plug them in. I would still start with the y-intercept because at least there, half of the point is very easy to spot, right? The, the zero is always part of a y-intercept. And then, you know, we might estimate that it's more like just regular old 10 or something like that, looking at our line of best fit. And so you'd have to kind of be okay with the fact that on, if you plugged in the zero, uh, for x, you would get 10.1 here. Just be like, okay, well, I'm close enough because I'm estimating. So that would be the way to kind of get rid of, again, choices A and C. And then just pick another point instead of calculating the slope for the other piece, right? Pick something that kind of looks like your line of best fit is like going through it. So maybe right here, we have the point uh, two comma six. Am I reading that right? Yes. And then we can put that into the equations. I'll do it just for the sake of showing you. Uh, here I'd have negative 1.9 times two, plus 10.1, get my regular old calculator, negative uh, 1.9 times 2 is negative 3.8, plus 10.1 is 6.3. So not exactly 6, but I estimate it, so maybe that's close. Let's just try the only other choice that's left, choice D, and see if that's any better. 1.9 is now positive, times 2, plus 10.1. So again, 1.9 times 2 is 3.8, plus 10.1 is now 13.9, way off from the six that I wanted, so it's very clear that choice B is better. And like I said, this is, this is something I would do maybe if I was unsure, or maybe if I had a harder question, but really the way to handle this is just to have memorized Y equals MX plus B, so that you can kind of quickly look at Y intercepts and slopes, and kind of just see what's changing in the easiest possible way. That would make this maybe a 10 second question that you would confidently get right.